Picture this. There's a family, two brothers, one ten, the other thirteen, a mother and a father. It's springtime after school. The mother's preparing dinner. The father's in the living room watching the baseball game. The younger brother's upstairs playing video games with his friend, steering a boat through a magical obstacle course, totally glued to the screen. The older brother's down the hall doing his math homework for school the next day. The mother calls everyone down for dinner. She's shouting at the younger brother to put the video game down. Even though this story sounds familiar to many of you, what if I were to tell you that the children playing video games weren't just indulging in entertainment? The mother wasn't shouting at them for spending too much time gaming, because the games that they were playing were prescribed to them by their doctor to treat their ADHD. They were clinically designed and validated, FDA approved, paid for by insurance. So that when the children wake up and go to school the next day, they've improved their cognitive capabilities, impulse control, selective attention, working memory, task switching, the ability to plan, prioritize, and organize. I know that this might sound like science fiction, but this version of the story is beginning to come to life. You see, I was that younger brother who grew up playing video games. I got yelled at. I had a wild imagination. I took stimulants to help me pay attention in school. My older brother was the A student. He built model rockets in his free time. He did his math homework while I was off, letting my imagination run wild. But being the outlier in my family made me care about health from a young age. I developed a fascination with the brain. Trips to the doctor or to the pharmacy were the most dreaded events, always. My natural curiosity and my passion for technology led me to dedicate my adult life to building and discovering solutions to improve the way that we experience healthcare. Because let's face it, our healthcare experience can be painful, and it's not just physical. It's emotional. It's financial. Doctors treat things like pain and neurological disorders with pharmacological drugs, and I'm excited because we're beginning to move past this finally. Right now, there's a convergence of science and technology that fundamentally influence the brain in new ways, that enable us to treat disease and disorder in a digital fashion. Action video games, like the children were playing, are just one component. Of what's known as experiential technology, it's a new industry. Experiential technology are products and services like virtual and augmented reality, video games that enhance how we experience the world around us and improve our capabilities as humans. But more than just entertainment, when applied to healthcare, they're truly personalized therapeutics at a lower cost. They're drugs that can be distributed to any device globally. They can be tracked, monitored. We don't have to worry about negative side effects like increased heart rate or agitation that can often result from taking a stimulant. And more than just applied to the treatment of ADHD, it's being used to treat chronic pain, to alleviate feelings of isolation, to improve senior care. Come with me. To Cedar Sinai Health System in Los Angeles. Walk with me down the halls into the hospital rooms. Let's watch the patients recovering from surgery ease their pain with VR headsets. See the doctors' excitement as they immerse their patients in virtual environments that distract their minds from the pain. They've just reduced their patients' pain by 24 percent. This is happening today. Instead of an opioid that can lead to addiction, VR gives us the ability to use the power of our own brains to heal. Think about the soldiers wounded overseas, a friend or a family member that might be recovering from cancer. It's not just about treating the pain, though. It's also about impacting the experience and how we recover from it. Follow me down the road. 
to the senior care facility, where our elderly family members are happy, vibrant, engaged. Notice the nurses' joy as their residents use VR to reconnect with their family members, revisit their childhood homes. The restaurant they opened 40 years ago. Over half of seniors after the age of 80 develop feelings of isolation, which makes them four times more likely to end up hospitalized. How can we alleviate this? We're starting to with VR. For seniors, VR is not just an immersive experience; it's nostalgia, a healthy walk down memory lane. When I was younger, I wish I was glued to the game that improved my cognition, not Mario Brothers. <laughs> At some point in all of our lives, whether a friend or a family member, we all know somebody that needs hospital care, a senior home. A new medication. The beauty of experiential technology is that it enables us to unlock our full potential as humans, to become our happiest and healthiest selves, to upgrade our mind software to a more powerful version. I invite you to imagine what a world filled with experiential technology might look like. To think about how that could impact your families, and to prepare for the day when it arrives, because it's coming. We're virtually there. Soon, it'll be a reality. Thank you.